I know that the last two videos I made were about practice, but I'm going to talk about practicing again. This month I've been doing some draw this in your style challenges in 3D. In this video I did a challenge by the artist Rydez Art, I hope I'm saying that right, on Instagram. If you haven't already, you should go down to the link in the description below and check out their page because they are making some incredible art. In this video I want to talk about working destructively versus working non-destructively. Without further ado, let's get into it. First, I would like to give a shout out to a friend of mine. He is an artist and an excellent sculptor. If you haven't already checked out Ferd's page, go over and look at his artwork on Instagram. He's an amazing artist and he's making some really impressive stuff in 3D. I have him to thank for a lot of the points I'm going to make in this video and he really helped me assess some of the flaws in my process. Just a few weeks ago, my process would begin with a sphere and I would start to sculpt the character's skull as one single piece until it looked approximately the way that I wanted it before moving on to the rest of the face. This process worked okay for me for a while, but the problem was it was easy for me to spend two or three hours on just the skull as a base mesh for the head before ever moving on to the rest of the face. This meant that I would spend way too much time on details and by the end of two or three hours, I would just have a skull sculpted with some detail on it and I would feel bad for having to go on to the next phase of my block out because I would be destroying all the details that I spent so much time to make. At that point, I was just sculpting a skull. I wasn't thinking about the rest of my process or as the project as a whole. I was spending all my time on my block out phase and I was getting lost because I didn't have a plan. My friend helped me realize this. He pointed out that I was taking a lot of control away from myself in the way that I sculpted. Now, I may have been doing my homework and drawing and looking at reference of skulls all the time, but when I tried to put the face on the character over the top of that, I would often mess something up like the nose or the placement of the ears, and if one piece was wrong, I would have to adjust the entire head and go back and often destroy all of my hard work in order to get the proportions right for the rest of the face. He has since shown me a workflow that I've adopted, and it has been working really, really well for me. Instead of sculpting the head as a whole, as one piece, I use as many subtools as is needed to create each individual piece of anatomy as I go. For the face, this means creating the muscles, or creating shapes that are in the right place that the face muscles go. So yes, I do start by sculpting a base for the skull, but then I immediately identify where my eye line is, where the ears go, where the nose goes, and I start inserting subtools individually for every individual piece on the face. Then I start to add secondary shapes to those pieces. This is where understanding of anatomy comes in. You don't have to be a master at understanding the human face. You just have to understand how many pieces each part of the face is made up of. For instance, the nose is made up of four parts. There's the bridge, there's the tip, and there's two wings. So just insert a subtool for each one of those pieces individually and place them all together to make your nose. Working this way gives you 100% control over the entire face and you can edit things up until the very last shot. When you're exporting from ZBrush and bringing stuff into Blender, it's important to have freedom and mobility and being able to change things on the fly in case you see something wrong because of perspective change or lighting change or if anything is just off, you can always go back into ZBrush and re-export your file. So first you need to make a generic base head. Get the eye line in the correct place. Start inserting individual pieces for the eyes, nose, ears, mouth, any of those pieces. Start to get the placement of all the pieces approximately the way you want it to look just so that it looks like a generic face. Be sure to be looking at reference while you're doing this first step because it's gonna help you get your foundation correct so that you don't have to go back and change anything later on. Then start looking at your actual reference for whatever piece it is you're creating. Look at how high the cheeks are. Look at how far apart the eyes are, how high up the ears go, how wide the nose is. These are all the important identifying factors of the human face. Measure the distance between all the parts and that will tell you the unique face shape that you're trying to create. From there, it's just moving and inflating and repositioning the pieces to try and achieve the structure that you're looking for. And this process is not easy and it's gonna take time and you're going to get frustrated. Doing anything just takes a lot of time and practice, but that's the most important thing is just keep doing it. Once I'm done with my model in ZBrush, I export it over to Blender to do some hair and do some rendering. Working with the hair physics in Blender was a lot of fun, but it was a huge challenge because I've never worked with it before. I ended up splitting the hair on the scalp up into five vertex groups. So there was the left and right side, the back, the top, and I also put in a section for the bangs. I probably sat there for three or four hours just grooming the hair. 
By the way, a helpful tip when you're working with hair in Blender is use EV while you're working and it will show you a more accurate representation than cycles. This is only in live view as you're working. When you actually render your image out, I believe that cycles does a little bit of a better job with realistic lighting, so I ended up going with that. Anyway, this has been the whole process for this character from beginning to end. It is a new process for me, but I've been practicing it and it has been paying off because I'm getting more accurate details in my character's faces and I'm also given much more control over the entire piece from beginning to end. So I hope that this was helpful and maybe some people starting out can watch this video and get a little bit of a different perspective because I know it was a huge challenge for me when I was first starting out. That's all the time I got for this week, guys. Thank you again for watching. If you like this video, I'm also working on my Patreon, and I'm also working on Gumroad to create courses for 3D characters like this. If you'd want to see how to create a character like this in a course, leave me a comment down below and let me know. And if not, that's okay too. Don't forget to like this video and leave me a comment down below. Turn on notifications when you want to see when I come up with new stuff. But until next time...